You know, we should be known for being the church and, and not really the building that we meet in. We should be known for being the church. We gotta, I, mean, it, it, I heard the same, we've got to stop going to church and we've got to start being the church. We've got to get out there and make a difference in this world that we live in and be the hands and feet of Jesus and really make a difference. See, the, the world isn't looking for a church. They're looking for the church of Jesus Christ. And I believe that God has all given us a part, given all of us a part in the, in the church, in the body of Christ, in, in the body of believers. And we're going to continue our message series, We Are the Church, Working Together and Building the Kingdom. And I believe that every single one of us has a place and a, and a role to play in the kingdom. There's not one of us in this place today that, that, that God doesn't have a plan, that God doesn't have a purpose, not one of us that can't find your purpose in life within the context of the body of Christ. I believe there's a place for you to serve, there's a place for you to give, there's a, there's a place for you to become all that God has called you to be in Jesus Christ. I'm convinced that the satisfaction that most people are looking for when they come to a church is found in serving and giving of yourself to others. I believe we miss out what it, what it means to be a part of a body when we're not, when we're not, we're not being a part of the body and, and working with the body and working with the family to do all that we've got to do to reach the people of this region. I mean, I believe that your, your life will radically change when you find your best fit, when you find that place for you to serve. That place that God has created you to, to, to fit in, to serve, to give. Because, you know, God creates us all different with strengths, with gifts. Some of us are wired a little bit different, and that's okay. Because God creates us to, 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 to all come together and, and, and make a difference. I remember sitting around that table, like I mentioned earlier, about signing for that building, and... Uh, not quite, not quite knowing how all of it's going to come together and get done. Because I'm only one person, and I, I only know so much, and I, I saw all that had to get done. Man, I'm not an electrician. I don't do all this other stuff. I, I know what I know, and that's all that I know how to do. I mean, I could probably figure it out. But we move forward in faith, and what happened as we move forward in faith is that, that everybody came together, people with other, other talents, other giftings, other, other, other ways of contributing that, that, that me, myself, and Danielle could not have possibly done, because, but because everybody came together, they gave their gifts, they gave their talents, they gave their time, we all came together, and this is getting done. God provided and sent the right people. See, with the right knowledge and abilities to do what, we had the right knowledge and ability to do what God had called us to do. Romans 12, 3, 6 says this. You know, sometimes we think that we can do everything. We don't think that we need other people. But Romans 12, 3 through 6 says this. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in ordinance with a measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, see, there's something that you can do that I cannot do. There's something that I can do that you cannot do. The point here is that every person here matters. Every person here is important. And you look at me and say, wait, wait, pastor has the most important job. No. Every single one of us sitting here has the most important job. It's a matter for us to find out what God has called us to do and function within the body of Christ. Just each one of you has one body and many members. And these members do not all have the same function. I'm not gifted to serve in a nursery. <laughs> Maybe the kids. <laughs> So in Christ, we are many from one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts. Three years ago, when we started meeting here, when we started this church, I remember coming down to New London, Connecticut, knowing that God had called us here. We came down here with nothing but faith. <laughs> 
We didn't know how it was going to do, how it was going to all come together, but we had this vision. We knew, we, we got kind of a picture of what it's going to look like in the future. God had given us a dream, but God had, and God had given us a vision, but we didn't know how it was all going to happen. What we did know is that we needed the body of Christ. We, we needed people to, to, to come as a, a team to help this happen, and that's what happened. We, we put together a team. And it's because of the people who serve, the people who give, the, the people who came together that this church exists. Today, the ministry of our church is defined by the people who serve here every single, every single week. They come in at 8 o'clock, unload those trailers. They, they stay till 1 o'clock to, to load it back up. They, 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 serve, they, they, they welcome people in there. They serve in the kids. They, they serve in the nursery. They play in the band, they, the media, and the sound, and, and ushering, and all the various other ministries in this church. I'm going to give you a little bit of biblical history. In the Old Testament, God's Spirit worked through priests, special people, people who had this connection with God that other people didn't have. And they did the work of the ministry. They did the work of the priests. They would sacrifice animals. Every once a year, the high priest would go beyond the veil, and they would meet with God. And they had this special connection to God. But in the New Testament, when Jesus arrived on the scene, Jesus looked at ordinary people like you and me, and he said, you are the light of the world. You are called. You have a place in the kingdom. You have a place to serve. You are my chosen people, my royal priesthood, he even said. And said, you will be my witnesses. All of a sudden, it went from this one special person, this special person called a priest, So average people like you and I having a place in ministry within the body of Christ. He called us all priests, and we are all ministers. Then on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, the Spirit of God said on all of them, the message was clear that God wants his power on everyone's life. And he took ordinary people, untrained, uneducated people to do extraordinary things in the kingdom. You see, Peter he was, and, and, and the rest of the disciples, they're, they're untrained and ordinary people. They were fishermen. They didn't go to seminary. They didn't go to Bible school. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't study a textbook. But God used them, ordinary people, to do amazing things. Right after Jesus' life, the Christian leaders decided to hire a few people, though. They're called clergy. They're called pastors. <laughs> and left the work of the ministry to hired people who make it their career. And the rest passively sat along on the sidelines and watched. In the 1500s, the, the Protestant Reformation talked about and revealed to the the body of Christ the priesthood of all of the believers, how we're all priests before God, that we all have a connection with him. If we're followers of Christ, we have a connection with the Father. There's not one person that can can be closer to the Father than another person. He loves us all the same. We're all, all followers of Jesus Christ have that connection with the Father. But nothing really changed in the church. There's still groups of people. There were clergy and there's still laymen. It's their job to do it. But today, that's what we see, still see in a lot, of, um, a lot of churches, and we still see a lot of Christians living unfulfilled lives within the body of Christ. Churches struggle along without the whole team on the field. And there's not one ounce of biblical support for that. That's not what God had in mind. Instead, there's a ton of evidence in Scripture that that he wanted to take ordinary people and make them priests and to do extraordinary things. But but here's what the Bible says. First of all, every Christian is a minister. Okay, we are the church. We, we are the church. Every Christian is a minister. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. We are all ministers. We are all called to the ministry. We are all called to serve within the body of Christ. 
And also, every task is important. See, there's not an A, a list and a B list. My job is not important than your job. The important thing is, is for us to find out what God has called us to do within the context of the body of Christ. Every job is important. If a, you know, every, every member of your body is just as important as the others. Some say, Pastor Jeff, well, you have the most important gift. The truth is that we're all teammates. Everybody is needed, which means if you sit out, we all suffer. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. Every person is needed. Every task is important. And, and it's, it's easy for us to think, and I, I begin to think about this, man, it's going to be such a relief to, to, to have church in a building. And I, for a second, I was a little bit think that there's a lot less work involved. <laughs> in fact, once I started thinking about it, there's more work involved in having a church inside of a building. Maybe we're not unloading every week. Maybe we're not loading back up. Maybe we're not doing this. But God's going to present opportunities for us to minister. There's maintenance. There's lawn care. There's, there's cleaning the church. There's a whole vast uh, amount of things that need to get done. And we're going we're gonna to be able to, to, to have an opportunity to, to develop our ministry in different ways. We're going to need people to serve in those ministries. We're going we're gonna to need more people. I believe that God's going to send people. We're going to need people to, to man our, our, our kids' ministry, our, our nursery. Also, every person is unique. So you're not one in a million. You're one of a kind. God has uniquely developed you and made you the way that you are. And when you, when, when you became a follower of Christ, he has placed you in a body, in the body of Christ, with your specific gifts, with your specific design, to contribute to the body of Christ like nobody else can contribute you are not one of a million. You are one of a kind in the body of Christ. See, we're all wired by God differently and on purpose. It's all right to be a little bit different because you know what? God wired you that way on purpose because he has a plan for you and something for you to do that nobody else can do except for you. I cannot try to take your place. Somebody else cannot try to take your place. But God has placed you here within the body to contribute in a way that nobody else can. But the devil tells you, no, I don't matter. What I can do doesn't matter. I can't do that. There's nothing that I can do. And he tries to fool us that what, what God has gifted us doesn't really matter. It's not as good as their gift. I can't do that because what they're doing seems, seems better. How many are extroverts here? Introverts? I'm an introvert, believe it or not. <laughs> introvert in an extrovert's position. <laughs> doesn't mean that you don't like people. It just means where you find your rest. <laughs> Some people are very energized by being around people all the time. I love people, but I like to just kind of step back once in a while and hide in my room. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some of us are huggers. Some of us are like plywood. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some of us worship very demonstrative. Some of us are very reserved, you know? Some of us, we go on vacation. Some of us are really planned and strategic about our vacation, but others of, others of us just don't like to schedule our vacation because we feel like it doesn't make it a vacation if I've got to do something. <laughs> Pet peeve of mine, okay? So, <laughs> But God has wired us all differently, and all those qualities come together and help us be who God has called us to be in the church. It's with all those qualities that we're able to, to be the, the, the church and be as effective as God wants us to be. And God did that on purpose. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7 in the message says this, God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. 
See, I think that everybody needs to embrace your, your, your uniqueness. You need to embrace who God has created you to be. You don't need to compare yourself to other people. You don't need to, to, to say, well, they, they're so talented. I don't know how I could possibly serve. They, they can do this, and this is what they do, and this is, I, I don't really compare. We need to embrace the uniqueness in how God has created us. Some are athletic, some are not, and you can tell. <laughs> some of us can sing, and some are not, and that you can tell as well. <laughs> But God has created with our own gifts and our own talents to contribute to reaching the lost, to edifying the body, and being a part of what God has called us to do as a church. And God did that, and he makes every one of us unique. And also, everyone is a 10 in some area. Everyone is a 10 in some area. We try to rank ourselves, and we compare ourselves to other people. Well, if I were to rank myself between a 1 and 10, I'm probably like a 3, or I'm a 5. But I believe that God has made you a 10 in some area of your life that you can contribute to the body of Christ. In some way, God has uniquely designed you before the foundations of the world to contribute to Church 180 in a way that nobody else can contribute. In some way, some form, you are a 10 in some area. And our goal is to find out where that 10 is. Our goal is to find out where that passion lies. Our goal is to find out how God has uniquely designed you and put you to work in the kingdom of God. Because why? We're all ministers. We're all priests. We are a holy nation unto God. Everyone is a minister. We find that place in the body and we say, yeah, I was made for this. I was made for this. This is why God put me here. This is what God has created me to do. And we can have the confidence like David had when he said, Psalm 139, 13 through 16. For you, created, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You were made that way on purpose. <laughs> with all of our quirks, with all of our, all of our weird stuff, because you know what? We've all got those things in our lives. We've all got those quirks in those weird parts of our lives. But God created you that way on purpose. So I praise you because I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And some of us might be thinking, you know what, uh, I, I've already messed up my life. I don't think that I can fit in the body. I don't think that I can serve. I don't think that I have anything to contribute. But you know what God can do? He can take all those failures and use them for his good and use them for your good. You ever think about some of the trials and struggles that you've been through in the past? And God brought you to a place where you can actually help somebody? Because before that, you couldn't identify with them. Before that, you couldn't, you couldn't really connect with the pain that they're going through. But, but God put you, God didn't put you through the trial, but, but God brought you through that trial. And he allowed you to be formed and shaped into who he has called you to become. So you're talking to someone who just went through a, a nasty divorce. Who is the most comforting person for them to talk to? Somebody who may have experienced the same Somebody who has been mistreated so badly by family. Maybe somebody who's experienced bankruptcy. They want to talk some to somebody who maybe understands. Maybe if they didn't go through that situation, maybe they wouldn't understand where they're coming from. Maybe they might put judgments on them that are very unfair. Maybe they couldn't help them in the same way as if they had. And God has put all of us through situations in our lives, some hard things in our lives. God has brought us through those things so that we can be ministers to other people. So let's look, dig a little bit deeper um, with this and understanding spiritual gifts. Um, what exactly 
It is a spiritual gift, and how do we find it? Pretty soon, you, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. We're going to have a sign up for um, Church of Winnie Growth Track, and you can find out your specific gifts and callings and help you to plug into a specific area of serving and find out more about who we are as a church and how you can, how you can make a bigger difference in our community and through our church. But, but what is our spiritual gift and how do we find it? We'll give you those answers then um, as, and, and give you an opportunity to, to sign up for that. But today, let's just try to understand spiritual gifts. Um, too many don't have a clue or we're taught that God doesn't do that anymore. But let's see what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. Once a person finds Christ, once a person becomes a follower of Jesus Christ, God puts gifts inside of them. It's our job to find them and to develop them and to nurture them and to use them in the context of the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul said it this way. He said it to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.6. For this reason I remind you, to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Some of us have let our gifts lie dormant. Maybe we've used our gift in the past, but we've let it lie dormant, and we, just kind of, we don't even see the, the spark of that gift anymore. And we're praying to God, Lord, ignite that gift in me once again. Lord, I remember how, how joyful it was to serve with you in, in, in passion and, and, and in love. And I, I loved it, Lord, when you used me back then. Lord, uh, Lord I, I, I love serving you, but I just don't have that desire anymore. God puts it on us. Stir up that gift. You stir up that gift. Stop asking me to do it. Stir up the gift of God. Stir up that flame. You do it. I've already given it to you. It's there. Stir it up. That little ember of coal you've got in there, blow on it. Stir up that, that campfire. It looks like it's dead. It looks like all the, the coals are out. Stir, just stir it up. Stir up. Get those, get those, get those flames going again. Get those, those coals red again. But here's the definition of spiritual gifts. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together they can advance his purposes in the world. Together, every single one of us, to advance his purposes within the body of Christ and within the world so that we can make a difference. So if, if you'll buy into this truth, here's three benefits. First of all, my gifts show God's plan for my life. What's the number one question that people have? What is my purpose? If you really narrow it down, why am I here? And so many of us live discontented lives and frustrated lives because we have not stepped into the purpose and the calling that God has designed us for. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Jesus Christ so that we can do good things he planned for us long ago. See, your, your spiritual gifts will determine how you serve him. Your design reveals your destiny. And it, and it shows us how you are wired, how you are gifted, us, gifted, can give us clues to God's purpose in your life. So my gift shows God's plan for my life individually. Number two, my gifts are the key to fulfillment. The gifts that God has placed in my life. See, there, there's three classifications of gifts in the Bible. The gifts of the Father, which are those intrinsic um, qualities that God puts inside of us at birth. There's those gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power gifts that we find in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And there's the gifts of, of Jesus that he gave to the church, the, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But each one of us has, has a gift to give within the body of Christ. Time Magazine said this in this article about the new science of happiness. The, this is what they said. They said, the happiest people are people of faith, specifically those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. True fulfillment and true purpose is only found in Jesus Christ. It's only found within the context of the body of Christ. Doesn't mean that we don't have other jobs, other places, but that God has given us a specific purpose to contribute to be the, the arms, the feet, the fingers, the eyes, the, the nose, the toes, whatever, your, the legs, whatever it is that God has created you to be a part of within his body. 
But when, we, when one of us gets cut off, we cut ourselves off, the whole body suffers. Real joy doesn't come from making a lot of money or, lots of, or having a lots of pleasure or having lots of things. Real joy comes from knowing that my life is productive and that it counts and that I'm making a difference in, in the world. If you want to grow in your faith, serve. If you want to grow in your faith, find a way to give. If you want to grow in your faith, Live life beyond yourself. That's where you'll find true fulfillment and true joy and purpose in your relationship with God. John 15, 8, 11 says this, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. How do you show that you're his disciples? By bearing fruit. How do you bear fruit? You can't bear fruit if you're not having contact with anybody. You bear fruit because you're serving others. You're contributing. Thirdly, my gifts can make a difference. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Did you ever have the idea before that before you walked in here, that you're a priest? <laughs> Bible calls you a royal priesthood. We're all ministers. We're all called to ministry. Yes, my gift is a pastor. I'm called to full-time ministry. That's my, that's my vocation. But we're all called to ministry, whether it's at your job, in your home, and specifically here at Church 180. We all have something to give. God's empowered you to make a difference in a way that nobody else can. If you've already known that, I don't have to explain it to you. You already know, and you know the joy that, that comes through knowing that you are uh, the royal priesthood of God. And if not, hang on, we're going to help you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to grow in that. We're going we're gonna to go through, we're going to have signups for our, our growth track pretty soon. But God's doing amazing things, and He's got amazing things in store for Church 180. And I, I dream of everyone finding their passion. I dream of everybody in our church finding their place within the body, doing something that nobody else can do, having their place where they feel that, that they're contributing, they're, that, 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 they're, that they're living out God's purpose for their lives within the context of the local body of Jesus Christ. Can, can you imagine if we passed around a microphone today or sometime? And people said something like this, said, hey, I'm Matt. I'm a priest. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I have the spiritual gift of mercy. I serve in the kids' ministry. I love helping the helpless. I love making kids feel special. Pass it around to somebody else. Hey, my name's Jose. My, I'm, I'm a priest. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. My spiritual gift is a gift of helps. I love, I love doing those things behind the scenes that maybe nobody else knows. Maybe it's, maybe it's cleaning the, the church. Maybe, maybe it's just, just doing the, those little things that nobody else sees. But, but when I do it, I feel fulfilled. I, I feel a sense of joy, a sense of accomplishment. I feel like I was made for this. Pass it to somebody and they say, hey, my name is Renee. I'm, I'm a priest. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I have the spiritual gift of leadership. I lead a connect group. And when I do, I feel like I was made for this. Hey, my name's Ashley. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a priest. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I, 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 my, my connect group, we, we, we go, the, what we meet for is we go to the nursing home and we, and, we, and, we, and we spend time with the elderly there ministering to them. And when I do that, I feel like I was made for this. Hey, my name's Anna. I'm a priest and a follower of Jesus Christ. 
I feel like my spiritual gift is intercession. I spend hours praying for our church. I believe that I'm making a difference. And when I do that, I feel like I was made for this. What is it that God has made you for? What is it that you could be doing within the body of Christ that would, that would signal you and make you think, I was made for this? Hi, my name is Pastor Jeff. <laughs> I'm a priest. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I have the spiritual gift of a pastor. And when I'm in that role, I feel like this is what I was made for. What, how has God designed you? What gifts has God given you to contribute to the body of Christ? I'm going to the band come up and we're going to wrap things up. Every head bowed. Father, I thank you for designing us and creating us all. You formed us and you shaped us in our, womb, in your, in our mother's womb, Lord. You, you've given us all a divine purpose and a place within the body. Father, every member has their role. Every member has their place. And today, Lord, I ask you to, to show us what that place is. Maybe right now we're not quite sure. But Lord, we say, you know what, God? I'm willing, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to find out. Maybe it's going to take some doing. Maybe it's going to take some experimenting. Maybe it's going to take some prayer. Maybe it's just going to take a step of faith and just, just stepping out and doing something until I find out what you've called me to be. And maybe that first step is just being obedient and just to find a, a need in doing it. I remember being called into the ministry and had no other opportunities. I was called to be a pastor. I was called to preach his word. I wanted to do that with all of my life, all of my heart. I didn't wait for an opportunity to become a pastor, to get involved. One day somebody asked me, hey, will you usher with us? We need some people to, to usher with us. Hey, would you teach the kids in kids' church? Uh, would, would, you, would you help clean up around the church? And it all started with a yes. Here I am, Lord, send me. Yes, Lord, I will see a need and I will do it. I will, I will see the need within the body and I'll, I'll take this time for you to mold me and to shape me into who you've called me to be. And maybe you're here today and you're not quite sure what God has for you, where, you're, where that place is where you say, yes, this is why I was created. But I encourage you to, today to just simply say yes to him. Allow him to speak to your heart. Allow him to show you what to do. Today, Lord, there's people here who may not know their place. But, Lord, there is a place. You've uniquely designed us and shaped us. We are the church. Pastor Jeff isn't the church. The, the, the people up on the worship team, they aren't the church. We are the church. And everybody has their place. We thank you for the opportunity to serve. We thank you for the opportunity to contribute, Lord. And today, I ask you, Lord, to move by your spirit in this place that we may grow closer to you and become more and more a part of the body. Today, what I want you to do as an act of response, I want to take out your connection card. On the back here, what it's got is a checkbox. Send me inter information about serving at Church 180. And if you're interested in serving at Church 180, would you just, would you just check off that box? And back at the, the Welcome Center, what, the first step you're going to do is you're going to fill out a serving application. And what we're going to do is we're going to find out where you best fit within the body of Christ. So one day you can say, yes, this is why I'm here. This is what God has made me to do. 
and find true fulfillment. So if you just take a moment right now and fill out your connection cards, not only for this, but for any other reason. We've got a place for prayer requests on the back. Maybe you're here today, you've never experienced a relationship with Jesus Christ. Today you're here and uh, God's nudging you and he's urging you to become a part of his body. And it starts with making the decision to follow him. To take up the cross and follow him. To trust him. To ask him to forgive you of your sins. And today if you'll ask him to forgive you of your sins and trust that when he died on the cross, he paid for your sins. And that three days later, he rose from the dead. If you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. So Father, today, move by your spirit in this place. We worship you for who you are. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.